Okay. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us today on the sit down. I am LeVar Kemp, editor in chief of Snub Magazine. Um, and we have a very uh, special guest today. Um, an icon, a legend is in the room today. Um, but how we usually do it on the sit down is we don't introduce our guests. We let our guests introduce themselves on how they would want to be introduced. Because many times, you know, when you introduce someone, they're like, okay, that person may have forgot something, or I don't want to be introduced like that. But you know yourself, <laughs> you know yourself more personal. So how would you introduce yourself to the world if you had that chance just to start over and say, let me introduce myself? <laughs> wow, this is uh, this gentleman is a, a man of faith, a dedicated husband and father. He works in the entertainment industry and has been in the entertainment industry for 25 plus years as a solo artist, a singer, but he's also done acting and hosting and uh, plans on doing more of that. Right. <laughs> um, and he has a new album that is coming called Here to Stay, which we'll get into that. Right. <laughs> it's coming the 3rd of December. Uh, and his name is Kenny Lattimore. <laughs> there, you, look, there you have it, there you have it. <laughs> So let's just jump right into it. I tell my guests all the time, this is just a regular conversation. I don't sure. like to call it an interview because interviews can sometimes be so blocked off. Like we just having a general conversation. Yeah, um, I said, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for taking this opportunity um, to speak with us today. Um, my pleasure. What was, it, what was it like for you? Because you've been, you've seen literally the R&B world transform tremendously when you first did. Yeah. Um, how is that for you? Because you've stayed consistent all the way through. And like you said, you, you've been in the game for a minute. So you've seen the whole, you had to go through certain, like CD route. Now you're going through streaming route. What is that process like for you now? Wow, and the vinyl. And the... Right, right, right. A lot of people don't know. I, I started in, I got my first record deal in 1987. Gotcha. And in 87, it was just vinyl. So you're right. And then all of a sudden, it became CDs and you know, from cassette CDs, and then it became um, streaming and da no, downloading. Loading. Yeah, downloading. Then it became streaming. <laughs> oh, wow. So I think that the key to me being consistent was just that I kept making music. Yeah. A lot of times people get frustrated in the, in the music business, which is like 80% of what you have to do, you have to really be involved in um, the 80%. It's only about 20% creative that really rules. And then the 80% is understanding the business and how to market and expose your material and get publicity and all that. But um, I didn't get so caught up in that that I lost the love for right. it. Right. Um, and it is easy to think that you're losing the love for the music when it really is the business that you're losing the love for. Right. So uh, and then at the same time, I had to put myself in a position of humility because a lot of times we don't want to learn something new, <laughs> especially if you've had success. You're like, hey, right. I, I got I, I got this. <laughs> you know, I, I'm Kenny Lattimore and I've got, you know, and it's like, um, no, brother, you're going to have to learn something new like everybody else. Uh, but in addition to learning new forms of business. I used uh, my platform to mentor and bring in young producers that I could learn from too. The young producers that would tell me, hey, this is the new sound, this, or this is uh, the sound that we think is gonna be timeless. Right. And, uh, and go ahead and listen to, listen to Ro James and listen to Lucky Day and Luke James and you know, some of those young brothers and be in relationship with them so that you understand how to make this music come alive still and have the conversation with them because the moment that you're not making music that they don't listen to, you're not having a conversation with them anymore. You, you're, you are just dad, wah, 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 you know? All right. All right. And, and I think that speaks volume because, you know, like you said, the music world is ever so changing, but for you to even take the moment and to call out the names like Lucky Day and, and those individuals show that like you have no problem seeing where they're at because you know that drive, you know that absolutely, passion, you know that you know that passion about it. Um, what keeps you focused as far as um, we know how the industry is, um, it's very cutthroat, mm -hmm. uh, 
that you're in this industry. What, how do you keep your mental space? And even during the pandemic, you had actually a, a interesting year last year because before the pandemic, you got married. Yeah. So, <laughs> literally. So yeah. how has that process been for you? How have you kept your mental space and keeping that passion going to create a, a album that is being released on December 3rd? You know, it was really uh, about living life to its fullest. Again, I think that we get caught up in ourselves sometimes so much that we stop living life. And uh, when I got married and we went into quarantine, the blessing was I normally would have been on the road immediately after getting married. Wow. So I started to look at it with a grateful heart. You know, sometimes we have to, to take a different perspective and go, hey, if I were doing my regular thing, I would have been on the road. So how much time do you think this would add up to? If, you know, this quarantine time probably adds up to maybe three years <laughs> in right. one year of right. time that I would have actually spent with my wife had I been on the road. Gotcha. Um, so it's, you know, taking just a different approach to it. Um, staying focused, praying, being a man of faith, you know, praying me. with her. <laughs> dreaming and visualizing still and thinking about well what's going to happen when we come out of this because we had to believe at some point in our hearts that we that we would come out of it right and when we come out are we going to be ready to come out of it or are we mm -hmm. going to be in a position where we're sulking because it's happening right no it, it was like let's let's think about what the preparation is for us to have success on the other side of this and then now we're here now getting ready for December 3rd for the album. Yeah, man. Um, what was Who would that? have thought? Right. Now, that now I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give, I'm going to give you this. <laughs> I did not think that I would be doing uh, a contemporary R&B album right now. I didn't. Really? Um, I was about to do a Frank Sinatra, Nat King Cole kind of project because um, I just wanted to do something different. I, I, I come from the American Songbook and took voice lessons and studied and all that starting at 12 years old. And I was like, let me show another side of who I am. Mm. And uh, the way that this came about was uh, one of my guys, I mentor, because mentoring is extremely important to me, sharing information with the younger generation and just period sharing information. Um, one of my guys wanted to work on a project. And I said, you know what? I'm going to give you a, the short version of it. I was like, you should be recognized as a great producer. The way that Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis and uh, Ellie and Babyface used to do projects with artists like Janet Jackson and New Edition years ago, um, you should be in that space. You're a great songwriter and producer. This guy did, uh, if, if, any, if you know my history, Love Me Back, Stay On Your Mind. He did the song Be Here. They were all top 10s, like my last three top 10 songs. And I said, well, why don't you do this album and really make it your own. And we will really begin to tell the world about you. And that's what I want you to hear. Drakkar Madison Wesley. He was uh, the creative uh, force behind the music and everything. And then the inspiration behind the lyrics is my wife, you know, in our relationship and right. things that I would say to her. Uh, so putting all that together um, allowed me to sit back and learn from him you know, really take the lesson and say, hey, what is the sound that I should be doing this timeless? Because you've studied my legacy. You've been a part of my legacy. Right. But, you know, and, and interesting enough, we even had two, I kept saying one, but we had two second generation producers on this album. Mm. Aaron Lindsay, who is an amazing uh, producer, uh, is mainly known for gospel music, uh, did the song Lose You with his daughter, Kennedy Lindsay. Mm. amazing creative, ready for the world right now, ready for this generation. Then there's also a guy who uh, I call Darren Champ Jenkins, who did a song called Only Girl. And Darren is the son of the producer Jay Dibbs, who did my first solo demo and who worked on the first Kenny Lattimore. It all, it all came around. Project, and it all came around where these second generations are coming back and they're like, uncle, let us do some music for you. And it's actually working. And the key for me was just making sure that I didn't sound like I was trying to be them. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm, not try I'm not trying to be 25 over again. 
Right. Uh, I, I, but I want everything that I do to have authenticity and all that. So they're very particular, but they're honest with me. All right. They're particular about the sound. And if it's not right, they're honest enough to say, uh, you know, no, this isn't the right song for you. <laughs> There's right. always a diplomatic way. To but do you that. know, your your music has literally can stand in any generation. We don't get to Thank see you. that with a lot of with a lot of artists. You know, sometimes being in the social media world that we're in now, we see all these one hits just hitting mm. all the time. But when you go back and you play certain songs and you hear certain things, like even when my parents play certain things, it's like you listen to it and it's like, I still can jam to that. And then you'll be in the car sometimes. Like for me, sometimes I'll be in the car and I'd be like, all right, let me put this on. I didn't think I would be playing this now. Right. You know, but, but you can go through those those things as you get as you're young as young as I am. We yes. still listen to those music, and I think right. that's like I said, it speaks volume as to your longevity too. Because even now you're in release an album, and you're in this space of where you're still talking to younger generation, but putting it the format of your life as well. So that yeah, yeah. I always say that you know you might have been ten years old when for you came out. Right. But now you're 35 right. and you're experiencing love. You might be getting married, having kids of your own, all this other stuff. Um, so there's a new discovery of it. And I, I, I sing at weddings quite a bit. And when I can see different generations singing that song or relating to the lyric, it makes my heart so happy, man. It makes you, it makes you feel like, wow, I did the right thing and, um, and gave the world something that they could uh, hold on to forever. Is there one song on this album that you're like, this is this is my baby right here? You know, you, ha you have a lot of, you know, every album that comes out. And when I talk to different artists and they'll say like, oh, there's this song or that song. But is there any one particular song that you're like, this is the one that like, I, I know for a fact, this is the one. <laughs> wow, I can't say that. Uh, but this is one of those projects where when we finished, I was very proud of it as a whole. But uh, I get different comments about every single song. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to perform it well and with authenticity and feeling so that every song translated. Mm -hmm. um, the song that I uh, stepped outside of the box with the most was Lose You. And um, that's the one that uh, Aaron and Kennedy did. It, it evolved over time. Natural is one of the other producers on it. You may, he's a, a phenomenal producer. He helped to uh, give it its ambiance and it's the effects and all these different types of sounds that make it interesting. So I'm really looking forward to doing it live because I'm like, that's always my challenge. Can I do this live, really? All right. <laughs> Can I do this and sing? <laughs> I get, I, that's my challenge to myself. Um, Pressure was also, so those first, those first two songs, I was most proud of because I felt like, okay, I placed myself right where Drakkar wanted me to be mm -hmm. and stepped up to the plate to give a performance that was current and, um, and fit into you know, the now space. Right. And what I see is my streaming numbers increasing tremendously which means that the younger generation I gets listen. it. <laughs> They're listening because I'm like, uh, I always tell my, my recording partners, I said, Lord, we got to still go to radio, you guys. I said, we still have to go to radio because we don't want to leave out my millions of fans yeah. from, that are my fan base just because we're transitioning over to new technology. Right. Because if we do that, we're still going to miss something. We're going to miss some of the success of the project. And as a matter of fact, I think radio, terrestrial radio still drives the touring, um, whereas streaming will drive touring more in the next maybe five to 10 years. Streaming, to me, this is my opinion, streaming does drive touring for new artists, brand new artists, because people are curious as to what they sound like. But for legacy artists, we still have to do a combination of all that marketing. We have three questions for you that we ask you, and it's their final questions for we sure. do it on, on our uh, on our publication. Uh, what are three words that best describe who Kenny Lattimore is as an individual? Um, sincere, um, consistent, <laughs> um, loving. Okay. And then if you could be anybody past or present, who would you want to be? Like you could walk in their shoes for one day. Who wow. would you walk in somebody's shoes? Wow. Hmm. 
That's a good question. Um, past or present, it could be anybody. That it could be, be celebrity anybody. Or whatever. Okay. I mean, you already a big. I mean, you already a big name already. But who would, <laughs> who would Kenny Lattimore sit there and be like, I could be, I can be this person? Wow. Um, if I could walk in the shoes of, for one day, uh, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Okay. okay. To understand who I am, what my purpose is, what my mission is. And I try to do this anyway. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, my, my lofty goal. And to understand my purpose, my mission, be dedicated to that with no ifs, ands, or buts. And but knowing I have the power to do something else, but stay focused and oh man, I, yeah, that's I would. That's a that's a some big shoes to to walk in. But for one day, maybe I could experience it for one day and not be too overwhelmed. <laughs> Definitely. And then for your final uh, the final question, what can you leave as an encouraging word? to someone that may be out there that's trying to do certain things in life, as, as you know, many people look up to you. What are some things that you can uh, install into people um, to leave as your final words with us here at Snow? Um, I would just say, remember to do the things you love and continue in that because we are in a, a, a time in this society where we think that success is money and success is having things. But when you reach a level of success and you have things, you will meet people who also have things that are not happy, who are not whole, who are not people that have peace in their lives. And um, so remember to always do the things that, that make you happy and, and that allow you to enjoy life. Um, I tell people too, when you're, when you're, if you're a singer, Sing because you love it. Don't sing because you're trying to make a dollar because there's gonna be times when you have to balance both of those, those elements. And um, I wake up in the morning and if, I, if, if I'm having a, a challenging day or something, I know I can sing a song. And, and that's an old Earth, Wind & Fire song. Oh my God, sing a song, you <laughs> make it well. I think that's what they call it. But, but it's the truth uh, that, you know, I can sing a song and it can lighten my load you know, that's just a, a beautiful gift to have. You don't even have to be a great singer to do that. Music itself is just so powerful. Right. It does it. And that's the reason why I make this. That's the reason why I make he Here to Stay, you know, because great music is going to be here to stay. Great music is timeless. Um, and my love for it is here to stay. Definitely. Let the people know how they can reach you, how they can download the album, how they can get the album. Um, let them know all the platforms that you're on. Absolutely. I'm on all music platforms. You can go to Tidal, you can go to Spotify, you can go to Apple Music, you can go in, in anywhere, uh, Pandora. Uh, just look for Here to Stay. Um, if you'd like to get a signed copy, I think today might be, ooh, so I don't know when this is going to air, but uh, today might be the last uh, day to actually get a signed CD because we, we're still going to make CDs again because my legacy um, audience wants a CD. So look, I still, <laughs> so I'm I still like, use yeah. it. I still use CDs. You so. still use CDs. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> we did sign CDs for those that pre-order. You can go to Amazon, mm -hmm. you know, just do a pre-order. Um, go to KennyLattimore.com for all, like if you forget all of that, you can go to KennyLattimore.com. All encompassing is there when I'm touring. You can sign up for my VIP lounge list and I'll send you emails to let you know information, what's going on so you don't have to look for me. I'll come and find you. Definitely. Well, Kenny, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and as always, it's been a pleasure. Um, we'll, pleasure. we'll be definitely reaching out to your team because who knows, maybe you'll one day join us over here on the, uh, when we finally get out of this whole space. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that will be a blessing. I, I, I would love to do that. Definitely. All right. Well, you have an awesome day. Congratulations thank on you. your album. Thank you. Take care. All right. All right you blessing. too. Bye-bye.